How to groom an English setter. This video is for the UK show type English setter. The colours of the English setter, what you are more than likely going to get for dog grooming will be the orange Belton, the blue Belton or the tricolour. Which the tricolour can be called blue Belton and tan. Now if the dog you're working on, the English setter has not been neutered, you should by rights have a lovely coat to work with. But if the dog has, or bitch, has been neutered, then it's a case of you need to see the dog to see what you're going to do. What happens with English setters is one well, just goes like a, a woolly sheep, the coat, over time. The longer the dog has been neutered, the coat will get worse and thicker, curlier. You probably will have to clip the back a couple of years down the line. I mean, it's not the end of the world if it's your dog and you didn't realise that that would happen to the coat. A lot of owners don't realise that if you neuter an English setter, and same with some other breeds, the coat is just going to get thick, woolly, and mat up really easily. So step one for grooming your English setter, I will start by brushing the dog out. Brush out, comb out, demat, get any, remove any mats. I'll use a coat king for dematting any small mats. Then I'll use a steel comb just to then remove the mats. If the mats are that bad, just get your thinning scissors. If it's your own dog, get your thinning scissors and cut the knots out because the English setters are quite wimpy when it comes to dematting they don't like the knots being pulled out if there's bigger mats then they'll be clipped out you know you don't need to cut say there's a knot in the back end you don't need to cut the whole back end feathers off just because there's a mat there's ways of taking those knots out without it being that noticeable and they have that much coat anyway if you thin it thin them away the, the knots then yes yeah, they're hardly noticeable that they've come out if you can't demat them out, if they're that bad. So step two, I will always start cutting the hair at the back of the dog, back end of the dog. I do this from when there are tiny pups because the clippers are, are less noisy at the back end than going straight to the head. That's just my routine. So I'll start at the hock, I'll clip the hock. I use Andy's clippers with the 7FC blade and I'm just going to clip from the hock to the heel down. You can do this with a pair of thinning scissors if you don't have clippers, if it's your own dog. But you're just going to take that rag off. There'll probably be a couple of inches of hair down the hock and already that your dog is going to look completely different just having that hair cut off the hocks. If there's any hair trailing over the hock, then at 45 degree angle with the thinning scissors, I would cut that hair you don't want to go too short but you just want to it's like straggly hair just take that off with your thinning scissors and then I'll go down to the foot use my thinning scissors and pull up the hair between the toes and thin away the hair between the toes cut the nails at the same time on the foot I'm working on and then just get some straight scissors smaller are better and trim around the foot and the hair underneath the foot. That's the foot and the hock. Just check the feathers on that back leg as well. Brush, brush through that back leg. That's that leg done. The scissors I mainly use are Roseline thinning scissors. It's not a plug for Amazon, but for 20 quid on Amazon, you can get the cheapest pair of dog clippers pair of thinning scissors and a pair of straight safety scissors and even a steel comb. Dog nail clippers and a nail file. The dog nail clippers are useless for an English setter because they're so small. But if, it's, if this is for your own dog, they might work. You've got to trim the whole dog with those. Your rose line thinners, I don't know, 60, 70 quid. They are the best if you've just got one dog and you're going to show your dog or trim your own dog. Yeah, you could do with a pair of those. They're very good scissors, they'll last you forever if you look after them. Well worth buying. So step three, I'll move to the front leg and I'll trim the pastern. I will use the clippers again. You can use the thinning scissors. So that's from 
So at the bottom of the foot, up to the stopper pad, the pastern, clip that area out or thin it out, you know, use your thinners. And then again, trim the foot, trim the nails, brush through the leg, brush through the chest feathers. Again, just check everything, check there's no knots because if you bath your dog, if you're gonna bath the dog next, with any knots, what's gonna happen is the knots, if you don't brush the dog after the bath, one knot will turn into 10. And if left, it will turn into a big solid mat, which why, if you're gonna take your dog out when it's raining for a walk or let it go in the water and then don't brush the dog and you've got knots in that dog, which is why you will end up with mats. So ideally when you've been out in the wet with the dog, next day when, you're, when the coat's dry, is the best time to just brush through and check the coat. Because say if you have got knots, that's what's gonna make big mats. If, you, if the coat's got wet, even long grass when it's damp, they'll get wet and that's how your knots form. For step four, I'll move around to the ear, still on one side of the dog. I'll come around to the ears and for the ears, I prefer to use a 9FC blade on the Andy's clippers. If you buy the Andy's clippers or most dog clippers will come with what's called a 10 blade or even, that's similar to a 10 blade. That blade, what comes with the clippers would be fine for the ears. Or if you've only got a 7F, you can use a 7F. But by using a 7F, you're gonna to need to use your thinning scissors over the ears as well to make them shorter. Or just use your thinning scissors, brush the hair up and trim it off. You wanna clip down the ear, never clip up, especially if you're not confident with your dog clippers. Hold the ear flat and clip down with whichever blade you're gonna use if you're clipping the ears. And then you want to trim around the ears, but you're gonna trim down the ear. Although on this video, I'm holding the ear up, I'm actually trimming down the ear. And on an English setter, you need to leave the fringe on the front of the ears, which is it's just gonna soften the look. You can thin that out, you don't want it thick. So really, really short ears and then this big thick fringe. It all wants to look balanced. But yeah, leave that little, little bit of fringe on the front of the ears. Step five, the neck. I don't mind if you bring your English setter to me with the biggest, bushiest neck. I love trimming the necks when they're really bushy and then you can get a really nice, clean neck. Well, what you're going to trim that with, or what I will trim it with, is the 7FC. I'm going to start at the throat and go down to the breastbone. And go under the ears and bring it down and clean all that area out. And what you can do is then comb up the hair and scissor with your thinning scissors take it a little bit shorter. What I will do is reverse the 7F. So if you are a groomer and you're used to doing cockers and you'll reverse the blade, you'll know you're gonna to need to really stretch that head up to stretch the skin to take that 7F back up. But the problem with English setters is you need to judge whether they have got enough coat to take the blade being reversed. Because you could reverse the blade and end up, it could just be skin what's left because the coat is not actually as thick as it appears. So if you're unsure, just clip down with the 7F, comb up the hair, and then any bits what are sticking out, then just thin over those. Because you're gonna have a lot of blending to do with your thinners once you reverse the blade to take it mega short, which is what I like to do on, on most of the dogs I'll do, because I like the cleanest neck possible. And then the hair on the back of the neck, to the clipped hair, you're gonna need to blend it in with your thinning scissors. And the shorter you take the front, the more of a step there's gonna be either side of the ears to blend in, to create that clean neck. But I say, do be very careful and that coat on the neck needs to be bone dry when you're clipping that neck. 
So ideally before the bath, if you've got a dog in for grooming, what I would do with the show dogs is clip the dogs, bath the dogs and re-trim the dogs the next day so everything is bone dry. And you'll trim the dog the other side, repeat the process on everything else. And then when it comes to the tail, step six, you're just going to brush the tail through, take the hair to the end of the tail, you're going to leave a little bit over the end of the tail and take the end off. And by rights you should have a nice fan. The tail on an English setter should be at the hock or shorter. They, sh they shouldn't have a long ropey tail. And they'll come in and have probably three inches what need taking off the end of the tail. But so you don't want to go dead close to the very end of the tail. You want to leave a little bit of hair at the end and then it will come down as a fan. And any stray hairs you can just cut off with the straight scissors. And that's it. The dog's ready for a bath. I've got the Hydra bath to bath the bigger dogs in, which is great. But I will use aloe vera or not sensitive skin. English setters can be prone to skin conditions and allergies. But I will, I mean, sometimes I'll use Dirty Beast if the dogs are filthy. Wool Dirty Beast. But the aloe soothe, which needs to be watered down if you're using it straight out the bottle, is a good shampoo or any kind of sensitive skin shampoo for an English setter. Bath and dry the dog. If you've got time you can put a toweling coat over. You can make a toweling coat out of a towel. I, made, I bought a sewing machine and made my own toweling coats years ago because I bought about five and none of them fit the dogs perfect. They would either jab into the shoulders, I mean this is for a show dog where you're wanting a really clean from neck down, they would almost jab into the shoulders that weren't right, so I made my own. But you can just get a towel and a safety pin and tie something around the middle. That will do, but you don't have to put a coat on. But by putting a coat on, it's going to really flatten the coat down. Half an hour, an hour, it depends how much time you've got, how long you've got the dog for. If I've got two or three English setters from the same home, I can do that because one can sit with the coat on while I'm grooming the other one and it's just enough time to flatten the coat. Once you're back, dried your dog, taking the coat off, you're just going to repeat the process. Just check everything because, well, just go over the feet, the hocks, the bastons. Check the ears, check the neck, there'll be more bits will stick out on the neck, tidy it up. That's it, you don't trim the feathers. And that's the owner wants the feathers short uh, once you cut those feathers you're just going to unbalance the dog you want the setter shape you don't need to trim like you would trim a spaniel underneath and you're going to take length off the legs you don't do that people will come to me because they want the dog to look like it should so yeah as a groomer, ask what they actually want or try and find out what the problem is, if they've got a problem, if they're struggling to manage the coat, work out what's going to be best for them. You can take length off the leg, front leg, without having to lift the leg up and cut the feathers. You can just, if the feather is on, feathers are hanging on the floor, you can just Again, angle your thinning scissors and take that off the floor without having to take all the feathers down. And that's just going to give you more of the setter look than the straight lines. As soon as you put those straight lines into a setter, you've lost the balance. Because by taking those three, three inches off the end of the tail, you've already shortened the look of the dog. And an English setter should appear short in body. And if you've got a great long tail, you've lengthened the dog. It's out of balance already. By cutting that tail alone and the hocks, you've created that shape. And you cut the feathers, you've unbalanced the dog. That's if they want the dog to look like it should. Okay, and that's pretty much it for the English setter. 
the basics of getting that set of style. I do have a blog post on the website, on my dog grooming website, how to groom an English setter, English setter grooming. If you want to bring your English setter to me for dog grooming, the prices are on there. But yeah, I'll put the link to my dog's website in the description below as well and all the tools we to do use. Okay.